Hi, I'm Lucy. I'm a high school student. Um, I come from a school with a really good ceramics program, but a lot of it is focused in wheel working, and I really identify as a sculptor and mixed media 3D artist. So when I first started classes there, I decided to take a different turn and do sculpture. So instead of focusing in the wheel working classes, I skipped up and started sculpture classes, and I've been there ever since, and I love it so much. This piece was actually inspired by a real person. I love doing work on personalities and sort of inspired from real people. So this was inspired from a woman I met. Um, she had been suffering from really crippling depression for a lot of her life and just found that life in some days would leave her feeling just really beat up and like she couldn't really do anything. So she also told me that the way she liked to unwind was in a bath at the end of the long day with a bottle of wine. And I kind of thought that was pretty funny and it really inspired me to make this sculpture. It's partially clay and partially other materials. Um, I made the bathtub and her figure out of stoneware um, that was low temp fired with glaze. I painted the black on the feet of the bathtub and the water is made of mixed beads and pearls. So there were a couple challenges making this. Um, starting with the figure, I actually made it in separate pieces. So underneath this water, she's actually in a couple of different pieces instead of being all one just for efficiency purposes. I got a lot of mixed reactions from this piece. Half of the people who look at it say, oh, that's so funny. You know, they sort of identify with having to unwind in a bath with a bottle of wine. And the other half sort of look at it and think it's really dark. They look at like the bloodied up elbows and knees and joints. Um, so I've gotten a lot of really mixed feelings about it. My art teacher loved it. <laughs> he really loved like the dynamic um, aspects to it. and the real contrast of the different opinions that it was getting. What I find really fascinating about this piece is that part of me thinks it's fun and whimsical and has a real sense of humor to it, but then I get to the figure and it's so dark <laughs> and almost disturbing the way that the limbs have been cut off. You have the splattering, which really reminds me a lot of blood. And I think that's strange because I think a lot of artworks that I look at they're either one or the other. They're either full out humorous and funny, or they're completely dark and difficult and harrowing to look at. Mm -hmm. So I think that's such an accomplishment that <laughs> you could have a piece that, it almost has an identity crisis in a way, in a good way, yeah. not in a bad way. And I think that's one of the really captivating things about this piece is it really sustains your attention. I'm wondering, did you do that on purpose? Did you have that in mind or did that just happen when you made it? So kind, kind of both in a way, because talking to this woman, she is very cynical. Mm -hmm. She kind of has this sense of, almost like a sense of humor mm -hmm. where she recognizes kind of like the the whimsical parts of the world and kind of shuts them down. And uh -huh. she has this like sort of dark way about her. One of the things I really like about the figure is that you didn't include the head. Because I think what I see a lot in figurative work is people are very reliant on facial expression to convey emotion. That's the first resort mm -hmm. that everybody goes to. And yet you've removed the head entirely. Mm -hmm. And what I like about that is it really forces us to think about the physical experience of being in the bathtub. Because yeah. if you think about being in a bathtub, the reason why people do that to relax is because it physically takes over your whole body, like your body's immersed in the water. Right. And also the gesture of the figure, I think is quite good. The fact that this <laughs> leg is extending outwards, is a little bit ridiculous in a way. I like that a lot. I'm wondering about the blood stains though. I mean, did you want those to be blood or did you want them to be more suggestive? I did, so that was a bit of a process for me, and I've gotten actually two things from people looking at that. So some of them, I have gotten the interpretation that it looks like wine maybe affecting the joints, which I thought was oh. interesting. Like it looks like uh -huh. drunkenness almost, like uh -huh. spreading throughout her body. Uh -huh. My intention though was it for actually, like it was supposed to be blood. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was supposed to be kind of like, well, like she told me, it, she kind of felt beat up and bloody mm -hmm. by the end of each day. Like each mm -hmm. day was such a burden. So that was sort of a physical representation of her being beat up, like literal cuts on her joints. I mean, I like that concept a yeah. lot because that really 
is so different than the bubbles, which seem so nurturing yeah. and fun. So I like that contrast. <clears throat> the thing um, about the, the blood splatters, though, is I really feel that they're cosmetic. Mm. They don't feel like they're actually immersed in the figure. And if you think about somebody who feels physically beat up, yeah. it's much more than just a splatter. I mean, this right. almost feels like somebody who is playing paintball and they got <laughs> yeah. tossed with paint. There, there's something about that that doesn't quite read as beat up. Now, I don't think you necessarily need to have blood dripping from the limbs or, right. you know, because that starts to look like almost a horror movie, which mm -hmm. goes into a different place that I don't think you want. But I wonder if it could be something less literal, like, for example, that maybe it could be in the form of the figure, that maybe you have chip marks where oh, you remove something where it almost looks like something is gnawing at yeah. her in a way i mean it doesn't have to be literal bite marks but i guess i want to see the the beaten up aspect of the right. figure in the form i really wanted to i was thinking about going back on that because the glaze i used this is glaze that i right. fired on her um for the blood was shiny and i think i really don't like that now yeah. looking at that mm -hmm. because you're right it looks like it was just splattered onto her and I feel like if I had maybe done some beating up of her figure and carving and maybe inlaid a more matte mm -hmm. darker mm -hmm. red type of thing in there that it would have looked a lot more interactive with her figure. I think that's a good point because what I do like about your piece is there's so many different surfaces mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. these bubbles really glisten. There's a um, pearlescent quality to that. I like that this looks like a ceramic bathtub. Which yeah. <laughs> and I think it's terrific that the figure is matte. But I do think that there's a glossiness to the blood which doesn't quite fit with mm -hmm. what you're talking about. I also think that anatomically speaking, I would have spent more time really thinking about articulating some of the musculature. I mean, I don't think you yeah. need to make a perfectly accurate right. anatomical piece. I don't think that works because yeah. this is more a symbol than it is a real person. Mm -hmm. I'm not expecting that. But I do feel, especially in the shoulder areas, this starts to look a little lumpy. Mm -hmm. it, it starts to feel um, almost like a, a wet noodle or something. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm missing that bone structure because especially if you think about a body that's beat up, mm -hmm. you have to think about what's happening with the muscles, do the bones protrude? Like I think in the joints especially, like these knees and these elbows, I wanna feel the bones there. Another thing I would consider is the design of the bathtub. I actually think could really communicate even more about this woman. I'm wondering, did you look at any historical images of bathtubs when you made it? I did a bit, but I was focused more on the feet when I did that. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, I actually used to have one in my house, one of those bathtubs on raised feet, and the feet are this black metal, and they have little carvings, and mm -hmm. I think I could have gotten even more intricate with those, but um, that was sort of what I was looking at more. I made the bathtub first, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like, how am I going to lay this on the table without it falling over? <laughs> which is where the feet came from. Well, it's funny that you solved a structural issue with the sculpture. Because yeah. anytime someone works in 3D, there's always something that's hard about the structure. Mm -hmm. Is it going to stand up? Yeah. Does it collapse? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a problem when you work <laughs> in 3D. But I think it was a really happy accident because I love the feet. The feet really the feet. give the bathtub personality. And what I'm thinking is if you could pump it up to a more ridiculous degree, like I'm thinking about those Rococo images that they did in France, mm -hmm. where it's just like gilded gold and yeah. really elaborate design. Because I do feel that the carving that you've done in the feet is a little bit sloppy and it it's is. very inconsistent. <laughs> um, because I would expect a ceramic bathtub like this to be pretty consistent, unless you want to go full out the other direction and make them all weird and different. I mean, that's another way to do it. I just feel right now that you feel a little bit hesitant mm -hmm. in that area. I don't feel your confidence in that area. So this is a, a sort of missed opportunity, I think, in a way to communicate. Like the whole bathtub almost is. Like, even just like the shape of this, you see some of those crazy ones that are like big yeah. sleeping figures. And I feel like maybe I could even still redo it, but making it sort of more exaggerated and intricate in that way would be neat. Or maybe even a tilt yeah. downwards, because it, it is very much almost like a tray. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about something a little bit more dynamic yeah. as a shape, I think would be really, really interesting. 
I think it's a very daring piece because you're talking about really difficult emotions and this woman's means of coping with it. And not just in terms of the subject, but also the way you're handling the media, the decision to get the beads and then the blood splatter. There's so many components to this piece. <laughs> and I think that's hard to do in 3D. I think in 3D, it's easier to say, okay, I'm only gonna work with clay or I'm only gonna work with wood. And I don't see that a lot where people are mixing different components. I mean, for me, one of the best parts of the piece is the water. That <laughs> really makes the piece because if I take those beads away, the whole whimsical atmosphere disappears. Mm -hmm. That was a great decision on your part. And I, I think you've done a really great job of that, really thinking about how do I get these different elements to interact. Mm -hmm.